The Kansas City Royals earn a split at home with the Cleveland Guardians to open up the 2022 MLB season. What does that mean for the rest of the year? How does this week shape up? And what did we learn from the opening weekend of Major League Baseball? All of that and more coming up on today's Lockdown Royals podcast, the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Royals podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Royals. And on today's show, brought to you by betonline.net, we're going to dive into the Kansas City Royals and this opening weekend of Major League Baseball. But again, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline has you covered for all the news, props, and odds than ever before. But online is where the game starts. You can bet on every Royals game at BetOnline.net. So make sure you go check it out and do that over there. On today's show, let's dive into the first Royals series of the year. It's against Cleveland, and they earn a split against Cleveland on a four-game wraparound series, uh, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Let's go back to opening day. It was awesome. Granted, the crowd wasn't there, and it was snowing and muddy weather and just mucky weather and just terrible sleet, hail, snow, sunshine, everything you can think of happened on Thursday. But it was just nice to have baseball back, and Zach Grinke was dealing as far as he goes on the re-sign going back home to Kansas City. Uh, and it was great seeing Bobby Witt Jr. make that back end and play and throw over to first and then have the game-winning RBI double was awesome for Bobby Witt Jr. as well. And it just felt good to have baseball back. They went to their bullpen. Everything was perfect. Opening day was kind of how you draw it up in general, especially to steal a game from Shane Bieber. Obviously, would you want more offensive production this weekend? Of course. But specifically on Thursday, to wait out Bieber, get to the bullpen and capitalize, that's what you ask for against an ace pitcher. And then your bullpen picks you up. Your starter picks you up in Zach Greinke. Their defense picked you up with a diving Nicky uh, Lopez play to save a run with Bobby Witt Jr.'s again backhand play throw across the diamond at 80 miles per hour. Those kind of run-saving plays are exactly what you need. And opening day really couldn't have gone much better. Of course, again, more production from your offense, but still it's opening day, pit hitters behind the pitchers and all that fun stuff. Had the day off on Friday. And then Saturday, Brad Keller deals. Brad Keller looks incredible on Saturday. He looks like uh, he did that first year in Kansas City, and there's a lot to be excited about because, again, you had your path to victory with your bullpen. You had Brad Keller looking incredible, and then your offense got a little bit more life to it on Saturday. And right there, you're 2-0. Uh, again, the offense did not have much life to it, but still they were in position to score, couldn't really score, and then in the extra inning period, uh, Mondesi hit the walk-off hit, which is great for him, of course, to get some confidence at the bottom of that order. Another game that, in general, you like what you're seeing from Kansas City. You like what you're seeing from the team at 2-0. and The real issue becomes Saturday, Sunday and Monday, right? And, and you know, before we get into Sunday and Monday, I want to preference this entire thing by saying, in baseball, you're trying to split series and win series. You're just trying to avoid losing series. That, that's really all it comes down to. And the Royals did their job on opening weekend by splitting with Cleveland. So they did their job in essence, right? You take this result if you're Kansas City. But again, another one nothing victory in this one where you muster up six hits facing a non-Shane Bieber pitcher is nothing to write home about offensively. But again, you had the timely hitting and that was fine and Brad Keller picked you up and the, and the entire pitching staff picked you up with Keller going for six innings and only giving up two hits and having one walk and five strikeouts. And then you go to Coleman, who was awesome for an inning and gave only up one hit, one strikeout. Amir Garrett was great for the two outs he recorded. Then Taylor Clark came in and got the final out. And then you had Starmont be great 
with one inning and uh, one hit given up and then the strikeout. And then Snyder, which I thought was a impossible scenario to make his debut in extras and uh, in the top of the 10th. And he went out there and he showed out and, and he was awesome on the bump and got the win in this game in his first major league uh, appearance. So the pitching picked you up for two straight days, the two straight games, I should say. Of course, you had the off day on Friday. The offense did nothing for two straight days, but they came through with a Mondesi game winning hit. Uh, and of course, on that same day, you had the Bobby Witt Jr. falling on his behind play where he just sidearms it and throws home and nabs the runner with a great tag from Salvador Perez and just makes a gutsy play. So again, I want to say before we dive into this, the Sunday and Monday negatives, the Royals did their job. You, It's hard to ask for much more than a sweep. I should say much more than a split or a series win. Uh, it's impossible sometimes to get more than that, especially in the, in the major leagues. It's hard to sweep any team even the worst team in baseball. So in general, they did their job. Where the issue comes is when you get that, when you get that game against Bieber and you steal that victory, so to say, a game that you should have lost, right? Bieber shut you down and it's expected. It's, it's, it's acceptable. If you get shut down by Shane Bieber, it's acceptable. Whenever you, however, reverse the tables on that and get that win, you're looking for at least a series win and not a split. And so that's where the bummer kicks in. But what we can take away from this from a positive standpoint is Taylor looked great. Grinky looked great. Your bullpen showed a ton of great flashes on the first two days. And then, of course, Sunday just got out of hand where at that point you just kind of knife that off the top and don't, and don't even mention Sunday. And then Monday, again, the game got away from you after you're making a, a nice little rally to make it 4-4. In general, a successful weekend. It's how you parlay this into something more. It's how you take this into St. Louis. It's how you take this into this weekend against Detroit. And we'll talk about it. We'll talk about Bobby Witt Jr. coming up. We'll talk about the Royals coming up and, and the, the Sunday that was a dreadful game. And then Monday as well to win the series. But first, I want to say right now, we're good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all betting sports stats and info this year. It has sports development from league news, reviews, predictions, including the basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline has you continued for your sources for the wagering on sports and live betting and playoffs and esports and more. Head over to the website today or even on your mobile device and check it out today. BetOnline is where the game starts. I want to show you how easy this is. So you go to your URL bar at the top. You go to betonline.net. You go to their sports book. And whenever I look for what to bet on, let's go to baseball and let's see the MLB lines for tomorrow. And you have the Royals in this case on the road in St. Louis as one and a half run underdogs. Uh, Daniel Lynch on the mound for the Royals. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Royals plus one and a half in St. Louis. Let me know what you're going to go with, but that's how easy it is. I just placed a bet in the time it took me to read that at betonline.net. You can do it too. Go over there right now, betonline.net, wherever you can find internet access. We are back on the Lockdown Royals podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Royals. And make sure you make this your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Royals baseball. For your second listen, go check out the Lockdown MLB podcast, Prospects Edition. That's the Lockdown MLB Prospects podcast hosted by Lindsey Crosby, a prospect encyclopedia going deeper on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available across all platforms. And of course, he's also reviewing the prospects in the majors right now, like Bobby Witt Jr., like Hunter Green, like Spencer Torkelson, like these top guys that have made their MLB debut on opening weekend, on opening day. Uh, so much fun right now around baseball. But let's dive back into the Royals. Again, follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Royals and follow the Lockdown Royals podcast anywhere you get podcasts from. And we're here for you. Look, did Bobby Witt Jr. have an excellent opening weekend? You got the RBI double. Great. He had two great defensive plays that stand out in your mind firmly. Awesome, right? And to me, even though it's not the jaw-dropping, eye-popping numbers, even though it's not like a fairy tale outside of the RBI double to put the go-ahead shot up, to put the go-ahead run on the board, to me, it's just the fact that he looks confident, mature. He looks like he knows what he's doing, and he doesn't look overwhelmed. He looks like he's in place. He looks like he's comfortable. And since he looks that way, 
I have no fear. I have no reason to believe that, that he's going to struggle. I think a breakout's right around the corner. Look, it's only been four games. And he's taking pitches. He's getting good will on at times, but it's just kind of finding defenders, obviously. It's just bad luck. That's baseball. Nothing that he's shown, despite what his numbers look like after four games, tells me he's overmatched in any way. So I have no concerns about Bobby Witt Jr. In fact, I'd bet on a breakout sooner rather than later. And we'll see where he lands today, and we'll see where he lands throughout the lot, you know, this next week or two. But it's important to give him the same courtesy you would give anyone else at the start of a year. It's a very, very small sample size, and it's not as though he's just been embarrassed up there. Again, taking getting professional takes, getting in hitter counts, hitting the ball hard, just not really finding holes right now in general. And so that's kind of led to a non-illustrious start, but he still had a ton of flashes and you know, enough flashes in four games to make you think that he will not have a terrible season or or will find a season-long slump by any means. So I want to discuss this Royals weekend. Brad Keller was awesome. Zach Krinko was awesome. The problem is, even on Saturday, that's not a very inspiring win. It's a fun win because you had the defensive save of Bobby Witt Jr. You had the Mondesi RBI. But it was not a win you write home about due to the fact that your offense couldn't produce and couldn't pick up Keller, who was really great. And then the next day, you go out there and get shelled 17-3. to Chris Bubich could not throw a strike. Brady Singer comes in for three innings and gives up four runs. Jackson Core is embarrassingly bad. Seven runs in three innings and 11 hits. Yep, 17 hits. I should say 17 runs on 23 hit, or 23 hits or 22 hits. Embarrassing. And you think about who you pitch in this game. You, you pitch Bubich, you pitch, pitch Koar, you pitch Singer. That's the doomsday scenario. We'll see how Daniel Lynch does on Tuesday against the Cardinals. But again, this is not a good start for a Royals team that I said the worst case scenario was your young pitchers get shelled and they're not any good, and you have to blow this whole rebuild up. Because if these guys aren't good, if they don't turn it around, again, very small sample size, but if they don't turn it around, the rebuild's over in a bad way. You're starting completely over from scratch. I don't know how the Royals aren't doing everything in their power to fix this, even if it's needlessly, even if it's needlessly firing the pitching coach, even if it's whatever it is. The fact that they're just sitting on their hands is embarrassing. Because... If you're going to wait and see on these guys who have only shown you negative results, you're going to wait and see negative results again. And they were in on Frankie Montas. That's awesome. It looks as though now he's going to go to the White Sox, and we'll see what that price is. But depending on that price, Frankie Montas should be a royal right now. because You have him under control for longer, and it's clear that at least one or two of these guys is going to fail. Like, there's just no way that Jackson Kowar, Chris Bewitch, and Brady Singer can all have miraculous turnarounds in their career and be great or live up to the hype or be a top three pitcher in baseball, you know, top three pitcher in your rotation. There's just no way. Mathematically speaking, the eye test, history of, of baseball tells you there's no way that they're all going to turn it around. We've seen Asa Lacey not look great in the minor leagues. I'm not just blow you away stuff in the minor leagues. That's concerning. We'll see again what Daniel Lynch does. But this is the worst possible start, not record-wise. Record-wise, they did their job. If you don't look at how these games unfold, if you don't look at how these games got to this point, how you got to a 2-2 two two record, record-wise, it's almost the best-case scenario. Because obviously, you can never predict a sweep. So going 4-0 no, is never the in the case scenario department because you just can't. You just cannot expect sweeping opponents, even the even the terrible ones. And then winning a whole series is tough to do as well in a four-game set whenever you're having to face off with their ace guaranteed in Shane Bieber, which you actually did win, but again, could not capitalize on that one. And then you had Carlos Hernandez, who, has a, who had a huge hot streak last year to end the year in the second half, but pitches four innings, gives up four runs on six hits. That's not good. And, and Hernandez would be a feather in your cap. Hernandez would be icing on the cake if he pans out to be anything noteworthy, if he, if he pans out to be somebody that you build around for years to come on a winning team. He might be here in two years because the team just sucks again. 
but it wouldn't be anything on a winning team. It would be icing on the cake, but it just adds to it. The Royals have never been able to, to develop pitching. No pitching has ever, ever gotten better under the Royals, and that's continuing this year so far. It's only one game, but it's not as though you played the Blue Jays. It's not as though you played the Yankees or Red Sox or Dodgers. You played the Cleveland Guardians, who have one of the worst lineups in all of baseball. And they rocked your world for whatever we just said, 17 runs yesterday and then 10 runs today. They rocked your world. And then today, again, Hernandez gave up the four runs, but then Snyder did a great job of limiting the action and, and giving up zero runs. And Coleman had pitched an inning of no run baseball. And then you turn to Brinson Stamont and they get into some dicey situations and they lose the game for you because you ended up tying the game at four and then they let up uh, five or four runs between the two of them. And then Barlow gives up a run. And you lose 10 to seven. Nice to see what Merrifield have two hits or three hits today. Or yeah, two hits. Nice to see Benatendi have three more hits today, and he's just incredible, batting 538 on the young season so far. Nice to see Salvador Perez get two hits today and kind of turn it back around with a walk. But Santana, 0 for 4. Dozier, 0 for 4. Mondesi goes 1 for 4. That's great. He Lopez goes 1 for 4. He's batting 400. It's, it's good that he's keeping the average up so far. And then Michael A. Taylor bats 200 this year. So far, it gets a run scored because he drew a walk. And with his gold glove caliber defense, sure, you can live with that. But it's what we always said it would be, the young pitching not getting there, and then in the middle of your order, you have Santana and Dozier just providing you little to nothing. That's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you in a big way. And so we'll see what the Royals can do from here. We'll, we'll keep monitoring the starting pitching scenario and the young pitching scenario for the Royals throughout the season, obviously. But... This weekend was a little discouraging from that standpoint. And Nicky Lopez and Jim Lindez, those guys are, I should say Nick, Nick Prado and Jim Lindez, those guys are hitting home runs in the minor leagues. And yeah, it might be time to admit that, you know, Santana shouldn't have an everyday spot in this on this lineup or same with Hunter Dozier. We'll see what the Royals choose to do throughout this week. It's still very early in the season. And ultimately, despite how you got there, you still got to a split. But no matter how you get there, you need to get to built.com because Built.com has everything you need from a protein bar perspective. They have these amazing protein bars that taste just like a candy bar. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off of your next order. Built.com, 15% off of your next order. Folks, you need to check them out today. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Make sure you go check them out right now. Look, it's been made easy for me to keep my resolutions true because i the healthy option is not repetitive any longer at Built Bar. They have so many new flavors that I can stay with the healthy option while not getting tired of it. My personal favorite is the cookies and cream Built Bar, but also they have the white chocolate cookies and cream and the peanut butter brownie chunk, which is awesome. Make sure you check them out today. Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off your next order. Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off your next order at Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off of your next order. We are back on the Locked On Royals podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Royals. And thank you for making Locked On Royals your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Royals baseball. For your second listen, go check out the Locked On MLB podcast. The Locked On MLB podcast is your place to be, hosted by Paul Francis Sullivan brings you your unique perspective from around the major leagues and previews what's to come throughout the week. It's free and available across all platforms, including the platform of YouTube, just as we are. And again, the Royals split with the Guardians. They're two and two, which is a good start. Again, you got there in a weird way, but a good start. Half a game back of the White Sox for first place, and then everyone else in the division, literally everyone else, is two and two. So you can just see how this will unfold. A big series against Detroit at the end of the week, but first a two-game set uh, with the Cardinals on Tuesday, Wednesday. It'll be Daniel Lynch going up against Hudson for the Cardinals on Tuesday, and then Zach Greinke going up, going up against Adam Wainwright on Wednesday at 12.15. That'll be a lot of fun uh, to watch at 12.15 on Wednesday. And then Thursday kicks it off back at the K with a four-game setter with the Tigers, who you know probably haven't been announced yet for the Tigers or the Royals. But still, that four-game set leads into a Monday off day to reset everything, 
And then it doesn't stop there. You're back at home against the Twins for a very important three-game set before taking on the Mariners in Seattle on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for another Monday off day. So a lot can be decided here in these next couple of weeks, but make sure you're there. Locked on Royals, wherever you get your podcast from. Locked on MLB for the national side of things. Make sure you check it out. And until tomorrow, be good and be good to one another.